Hello and welcome back to another class. Today we're going to get introduced to Firebase, uh, most especially Firestore and Firebase Storage. So we use these two uh, to store data on internet. One and twenty. Okay. We use these two to store uh, data on internet freely on uh, Firebase. I mean on internet. And uh, this technology is provided by Google, so it is efficient. So in our today's class, we're going to look at uh, how we can implement Firebase in uh, our applications, most especially Firestore and uh, Firebase Storage. It is uh, partially free and payable, but uh, the big percentage is free. So you can use it for even a bigger project at a free, uh, at a free cost even without any credit card and if you want to go for very 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 big project then you can go ahead and pay in case your project expands so today I'm going to show you how we can implement Firebase Firestore and Firebase storage in our applications so that our applications can communicate for, with one another on a what in different uh, in different platforms and different phones so today also if a uh, time allows we'll also start a project of firebase whereby we'll implement the previous thing that we've learned that is uh, zoom i mean room and uh, glide and the firebase itself to make something that can make sense or to relate things how we can come up with the what with the project that uses those three so i hope you're ready to learn firebase on how we can use firebase to communicate with the different applications if you're ready then let's get started so i'll begin by creating an application if you have any question just go ahead and ask okay so i'll begin by creating an application as you can see here called firebase app and uh, this is the package name and this is where it's going to be stored i have select java and then i'll select marshmallow uh, that's the minimum which is okay and then i'll go ahead and click on finish and then this project will start being created so if you search about Firebase on internet, you'll see it helps teams or startups and the global enterprises to build and run successful apps. So it helps apps to connect or to, to, to it gives uh, uh, services that can help apps to communicate on internet and to connect simply using what so is using internet. So they're going to begin by looking at Firebase first or and uh, this Firebase first or it is a flexible online database and it is free. You don't need to know even SQL to use Firebase Fasto. So if you click on uh, Firebase Fasto, you'll be taken to its learning page and they'll explain you what it means. Okay, they'll explain to you what it means. You can come here to pricing and you see how it is sold. You see, this is how it's sold. Now, for example, there is testing, it is free. Analytics, how your application is being used, it is free. And then also app distribution is free, app indexing is also free. So these are free services on Firebase. Then uh, on authentication, and the authentication is how we verify our SIM, our phone numbers, our phones. For example, you want to put a uh, phone SMS verification for your users, you can use authentication. They'll give you 10,000 uh, numbers to verify for free. They'll give you for uh, also 10,000 uh, uh, in. 10,000 in all other countries. I don't know what it means, but uh, the thing is that is for free here. Uh, big part is for free. You can verify 10,000 numbers, which is too much number for free, unless you want to go beyond and then you start spending this little money. So here you can use this. You have Firebase uh, Firestore. Uh, 1 GB will be provided for us. 1 GB of free database. It's very hard to fill this 1 GB with just uh, strings of data. And uh, we have 10 GB uh, network process, I mean network connection. Uh, we can write per day 20,000 writes and 50,000 per day uh, readings. So we can also make 20,000 deletings. So these are good numbers that we can use for, what? for free. So that's uh, a little bit way how Firebase it prices itself. So you can come and, read and learn more here. Just come to Firebase. Firebase and then you click on what on pricing you'll be able to see so today we're going to concentrate much on what on firebase first tool here so our application has finished compiling so i'm going to go ahead and add so we begin eh? 
and being the serious business. So first of all, we have to add Firebase in your what in our application. Here's our application. So I'm going to begin by adding Firebase in our application, and then after adding Firebase in our application, we'll go ahead and put the what the logic. So to add Firebase in your application, first of all, you must be logged into what to Gmail. Yeah, you just simply coming come here uh, to Tools, and then you click on Firebase. Then they will bring you here this uh, section where you can navigate and implement different things of Firebase. So for us, we're going to look at Firebase first of all, uh, to store what our data. There's also Firebase real-time data, but this one was deprecated. It is still implementing, but it was uh, replaced by this one almost. This no one still uses this real-time data. It was the first one, but they changed the whole architecture and came up with Firestore, which is almost always uh, replacing a Firebase database. So I'll go ahead and add Firebase first in our application. So you just simply click on file here and then click on get started. First of all, you connect your application. Okay, connecting your application, they're going to add here some files. Oh, they are going to add here some file in the Gradle here. Okay, so we're going to begin by connecting our application by simply clicking on connect to Firebase. So it should be logged in. So it will, sorry, it will, it will process and connect you to Google. Uh, now what you're going to do, I'm going to add here just one more application. I'm going to create a what? A new app. So to create a new app, you just simply click on add project. And then you put the name of your application. Uh, Firebase app. So let me leave it like this. No problem. And then after doing that, I'll go ahead. You, ha you are two projects away from project limit. No problem. I have so many emails. And even if I finish a project, I can delete. No problem. And I start another one. So that's I'm going to say I'm going to use this uh, project. So I'll use that name. Then after I'll click on continue, and then after I'll can enable analytics so I can disable analytics. So this analytics can help you to know when the app crash, application crashes, how how users are using your application. But for the sake of learning, even if we leave it, no problem. I can leave it, leave it, let it be there. No problem. Just up to you. So we click on continue. And then you say it's going to be Firebase, and then don't select this uh, location; it is ne unnecessary. And then you go ahead and uh, accept the terms and condition, and also accept here that they're going to use your data. <laughs> so you say create project. So this project will start being created. As it's being created, it's going to be added in your heart in our application. So we're going to wait and see. That this project has been added to our application so i'll pause a little bit as it is being added so the project is done so i click on continue uh, then it will be processing and it will try to connect to hot to android studio i say connect Is it done? Is it your, your, your project is connected. I thought it is connecting. So it is connected. Eh? So it is done. Now even if I go back to the, to the console, this article console, uh, I'll have no problem. This article console. Okay. So it's already connected. So even if I just go to Firebase console here. Like this. So I select our application. This is our application, okay? So this is what you'll see in what? In the console. So after doing like that, I'll come back to our, our what? Our Android Studio, and you can see here, they're telling us has been connected. So the next thing will be to add Firebase first or in our heart in our application. Uh, so I click on, uh, but wait, let me show you one more thing. Just uh, when the set is connected, it means that I've added one more thing in our project. Just click on here and turn to what project, and then come here to turn this on to project and come to your Firebase. Uh, I mean, come to your application. You'll see that uh, wait. okay, you'll see that uh, there is one, one file that has been added to your application that you didn't know. It's called Google Services JSON. Mm -hmm. 
So this is Google Search suggestion, the one that we use to configure our applications. So you'll find here some information about your application, about the app or your ID. So for example, if you have to change the package name, if you have to change maybe the package name or font calling this uh, very app to another one, you may need this what this JSON file. The one that shows that uh, our app has been connected to what Firebase. So this one you can use it to uh, manipulate the Firebase settings. So I'll go ahead and go back to Android view. Ah, so I'm there. So the first thing I'm going to add also Firebase in a what in application. So I simply click add the cloud store in a what in your application. So I just simply click accept and it'll be sta it started be it will start being added in a what in our app. So uh our app is being added and you can see it as I mean uh, oh, the SDK is being added and you can see it has been added. So if you come to the uh, to where to the Gradle, uh, not here, not this one. The Gradle module. Okay, the Gradle module. Is that one in go? Oh, there is in flutter. There's. Okay, you'll c if you come to the Gradle module, you'll find that um, Firebase first implemented implementation has been added to your what to your application okay so it has been added so after doing that i'll go back to our main activity and then we'll start doing our the logic first of all we're going to look at the crude like uh, how can we create and read and update in a what in a database and delete using firebase then after looking at those basic things at uh, the crude we'll go ahead and do what and uh, we'll go ahead and see how we can make a real world application that uh, we can implement using Firebase and Room and the uh, Glide that we've been learning. Okay, so we're going to begin just by making this very basic thing. So after I'll go back to my home. So what I'm going to do, I think we should make an application with the users this time. Is that time we made a shop? Or should we continue with the shop? As you should we make a shop or should we make a users? I think user related. Let us make a user related application, kind of social media, okay? So we're going to begin by creating here our simple form uh, whereby we are going to be just adding a user and then so I'll change this one linearly out for simplicity. And I'll change the orientation to vertical. Okay, so I will begin by adding what? Uh, we're going to begin by adding a user, and then after adding a user, then I will edit, update these things. Then we're going to do basic, very, very basic things. Re, I mean, add is uh, add, edit update i mean add edit uh, add read delete. edit and delete okay those are the basic things that you're going to do first okay so without wasting much time so you're going to begin by maybe creating a user we're going to add a user and then we read those users and then we delete those users so that's what we're going to do so we're going to put here a text uh, input in what input view oh Edit text. Oh my God, I'm using. I'm doing it in so many languages. Te text edit or edit text. Text edit. 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 Oh yeah. Edit text. I'm going to make it uh, with match parent and also height wrap content. And uh, I'll cross it here. I'll give it a hint of uh, name. Okay. Maybe full name okay let me put name okay okay to be just full name okay mm -hmm. let me give it maybe some margin of maybe 10 dp okay so let's do it a little bit faster no designing is a little bit text much it takes much time let us put the address okay I, I do can generate it 
Uh -huh. So just put the what? The address. Let's put the country. Okay, those two are enough. Then for practicing, then let us put the what? The button for submitting. Match parent wrap content. Okay. And give it maybe some padding of um, 10 dp. Okay. So let's give some text of uh, maybe uh, submit. Uh. Okay, say add user. Okay, say register user. Simple like this. Okay, so let's give maybe size. This is added to be margin, not padding. Okay, so we have our simple input there. So let's go ahead and give them IDs. I'm going to be a little bit faster because it's a self explanatory. So this is going to be maybe um, name and then. This is going to be what? Address. Uh, address. And then this is going to be BTN submit. Okay. So let's go ahead and connect these things to back end. So I shall have our edit text. So the first one can be name and then address and then button. Oh, this is the button, right? Very good. Okay. <coughs> Let's uh, bind these things. Okay, so let's go ahead and create maybe the context so we need it. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and bind these views, begin with the name. Let's go ahead and get the address. Let's go ahead and get the button. Aha, now let's go ahead and set the click listener. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have to collect the data. So here we begin by creating the model because to use Firebase, you must have a model of your data. Okay? You cannot just add anything without structure being structured. So we're going to create a model of a user. So I'll come here to our project. And then I'm going to put a package of what? Of models. New. Package. I'm going to call it model. The others called models. And it's up to you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Models. So I'm going to put here another new. In this package, I'm going to add here. A Java class, and I'm going to call it what? Users. User, not model. users. Mm. Or user model, something like that. Okay. So in this user model, I um, uh, will have um, uh, ID. You should be having an ID. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a string of ID. Otherwise, if you don't have an ID, then it will be hard for you to identify. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have a name. Make them public. I 
And then lastly, we'll have what? Address. Okay. So after doing those, we can create a constructor if you want to. Of all. Okay. So after, we'll go ahead and uh, maybe initialize this one by default to nothing. Also to nothing. Just to avoid crashing. Okay. So after doing that here we have now to feed to collect the data okay mm -hmm. so let me call this one uh, new new what okay i'm going to put the model that i've created user oh let us call it user model because user can cause a problem so I come and rename this file okay just click here rename the file I have to rename the file because I've changed the name okay rename the file to user model okay so if you put user I may go find some complication okay let me call this one new user okay so when you're binding views and submitting data okay let me just Initialize this is new as go to new uh, user model, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the constructor is asking for some things. Let me put a default constructor. Control Alt and insert constructor. I'll select none. This is just a default one. Eh? So, okay, so there we are. Uh, now here we have to collect data from what from from the form the name does it got name no get text okay. that is string so i can go ahead here and check if what has put maybe submit uh what submit function submit Okay, this is just a function. We can either validate from there, okay? Mm -hmm. I create this function for submitting, okay? So I collect the data. I can go ahead and check here. Let me try to increase on the font. to just clearly those are watching the video i'll reduce it <laughs> okay for now uh -huh, so i'll go ahead and check if it's empty can toast I can even request a focus name dot request focus so that the user should be taken back to where we want. Then I make sure that I do it. I don't allow the user to go beyond here. So I return. I have so ahead, I'll, I'll go ahead and do what? Uh, and get uh, the address. address. this so once we pass this to that means that we're good to add you so first of all i have to create for you an id okay mm -hmm. we have to correct for you the id so to create an id uh firebase can also create for you the id uh to uh, to to help you not to make an error okay mm -hmm. to help you not to make an error so first of all how to initialize the firebase come here to firebase assistant here assistant an assistant so you can get this assistant uh, by simply coming to tools, tools. and then Firebase. click on habits you'll get this assistant uh -huh. so we have to create first the these are the steps okay mm -hmm. how to create this firebase object first okay 
to create it i can just simply come on top here here and I create this firebase object you can just copy these things just firebase first all and you give it a name and then after you you say dot get instance okay so uh, here it is okay Firebase Firestore, and you call it a database. We give it anything, and then say Firebase Firestore dot get instance. Then this one initialize. Firebase is very 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 simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, before we begin, uh, first of all, I would like to tell you how Firebase uh, saves its things in uh, in in the okay in in how it organizes its things. First of all, I think I should, I'll need a diagram, okay? Uh, let me get uh, here something and I draw uh, something to you uh, so that you can understand. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the way Firebase saves these things, it saves them in in form of uh, tables and, uh, and what? And, uh, and, 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 and tables and the uh, documents <laughs> and and sub tables so for example if you have uh, different models for example we have users okay users maybe you'll have register users in your what in your project you'll have you need maybe users maybe you need also maybe posts okay maybe the, you'll need also maybe products something like this uh, or maybe chats messages So these are three models that you may save, okay? Mm -hmm. So this one, they don't have same organized data, okay? Everyone has its own way of structuring, uh, its own structure. A structure of a post is not the same structure as a what? Mm -hmm. Of a user. Structure of a message is not the same structure of a post and not the same structure of what? Of a user. So uh, these ways, uh, we save them in a, in a way called what? In a way called collection. So a collection is going to be kind of a table, like uh, this, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? So you can have here, for example, a table of what? A table of users, okay? Mm -hmm. So all your users will be saved in this uh, table with the... Uh, with the organized way of data, okay? Mm -hmm. So here maybe you'll have name, what and what, so the properties of users can be here. Mm -hmm. So for example, you can have name, here you can have uh, maybe address, okay? Okay, and maybe you can have blah, 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 okay? ID and the rest, okay? So this one is called a what? A collection, okay? This one you call it what? A collection. collection now a record that will be adding okay the record that will be adding in this document a record that will be adding this document for example mm -hmm. this will need to insert data right we will have to insert data 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 for example Jane we have for example John and joy okay Mm -hmm. So these records, we call them what? This one is what we call a collection. So the order, this table is called a collection. Mm -hmm. So these records, we call them, we call them a uh, document. So this record that we are inserting, these ones like gen, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. These ones we call them what? We call them records. Okay, so you're getting the point. Mm -hmm. So these, the, the whole table is a collection, and the, okay. these things that we're adding, the information, the records, we call them what? Document. We call them a document. So to, to, get a, to, get a, to access a record, to access a record, you must first pass through a collection and then access the record called a what? It's called a document. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're getting the point. So this is one. So I mean that if you have another one, 
uh, for example, this is uh, a post, okay? Okay, and this is another post of what? A collection of post. Uh huh. Maybe uh, this post can have maybe title. Okay, maybe it can have uh, things like photo. Maybe it can have details, description, what and what. So one more good thing about Firebase. One more good thing about Firebase is we can add another object or another property. It, it is not limited. It is not limited to the way how we can add uh, the properties. We can add another data type. For example, this is a custom data type mm -hmm. because it's not uh, that you'll get user in a, in default by default, but you can have uh, basic data types like strings and whatever. But the good thing about Fab is you can even add a custom data type to be your property. For example, this post will be posted by a certain user. So instead of adding the ID of this user, you can as well add here another data type called what? Called user. Okay. So in case uh, someone, a user posts, <coughs> a user posts something, you can get all his information and save it here in what in this the in the in, the, in this in this document very good okay so the whole information of a user you can save it in what in one document of a what of a post so you're not limited you can modify anything anytime so these for example can be post um, I have good news so so this is can be post title then you can put the photo link uh -huh. uh, what's happening guys for example that's another post and maybe so this can be another post so these are what is that document 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 so this document, we have a way that we, we, we must have a way how we do what, how, how we identify them. I want to insert some more. Okay. So we must, we have to have a way how can uniquely identify them. Firebase will not stop you from um, uh, not uniquely identifying your database, but you know, to have any record, you must have at least a what? An ID that will, should help you uh, to uniquely uh, identifying uh, these records okay so that must be there so that unique way of identifying those records uh, Firebase can help you to do that it can help you to do that way of identifying records uniquely I wanted to make it a little bit colored okay so but can be part of your what part of your property so, and uh, from this unique way, it is where you can be able to delete or edit or target to do an action on a certain record. So, that's how we do database in Firebase. We first need a collection, mm -hmm. and then in this collection, we can add different records. And these records, we call them what? We call them yeah. documents. Okay? So, that's it. And then, uh, we can use those ones to do what? To query anything. So... Let's go ahead and implement what I've told you. So first of all, we're going to create a, a what? A, 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 a document, I mean a collection of users. So a collection of users should be one, but you'll have so many what? So many records. So I'm going to create here a user's collection. So to create user's collection, I'm going to create a static string so that you should not be able to say change every time. So I'm going to put here public, public static string. I don't know that's what it's uh, static public string <laughs> okay public static uh, uh, final string yeah final like that final string and create a constant okay so I can call it users okay let me call just users okay so I have to give it a name eh? right uh, maybe users collection okay mm -hmm. so users collection it will be in a string called users so in this users it's where I'll be saving users collection so I'm going to create this collection called users so first of all if you don't want to crash your own 
the document, you, you better ask the firebase to make for you the what? The ID for that collection. I mean for that document. So to do that, I'll simply come to when I'm adding a user now, okay? We're adding a, a user. We're adding a user now. But remember, we have created just this Ducky Dog database, okay? So we want to get the ID of this user. So here, after verifying the user has given the name, the user have given what? Uh, the document. Now I need to get the ID for this user. And I want to ask Firebase to help me to create for me the ID so that I should not uh, contradict myself uh, by using maybe the ID that I already used. So to do that, I uh, so remember this is new user where we're saving what? Our database, our data. So I'll just simply come and say new user dot ID is equal to database this DB that we just created here instance, okay? DB dot collection. So I'm referencing this collection, okay? So you can say this collection or this collection. So I'm going to put the name of this collection. But remember, this collection name of this collection is the what is a static. I've already created it here. Mm -hmm. So you can as well just call it users if you want by putting a directly string but i'm going to just put the status that we should not uh, repeat ourselves so i'm going to put here users collection mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot collection so i have targeted here then i'm going to say i want a document a new document so i'm going to put dot what dot document okay document mm -hmm. you know a document is a what is a single record then from that document i'm going to request for it to create for us an id dot what dot get id okay mm -hmm. so by doing like this firebase will help you to get a new id for this new document mm -hmm. a new unique number a new unique string that cannot contradict another record from this document but i do that only when i'm adding a new user so by doing like that it means that you have created a string i mean your id mm -hmm. so after this i'm going to do what i'm going to add the user, the user. So to add the user, first of all, I want to show the progress that there's something that is going on. So I'll need this progress bar. Uh, progress dialog. Progress dialog. Okay. Uh, I'll initialize this progress dialog here in the on, on bind. Okay. Where is the on bind? On binding, if you right here. I'm just going to initialize it is equal to new progress dialog. I think it's only the context. That's all. Okay. So, and then after here, now I want to set the text. Dot set what title? Okay. I can say, please wait. Or processing. Okay. If I don't want the user to temper with me when I'm doing this process, I can set it to be cancelable false. Set cancelable. If you still remember, mm -hmm. this thing is false like this. So this will be help us start to progress. Mm -hmm. So, but you must handle every scenario so that it should not progress and get it locked there. And the, the, the application is locked while, uh, because it did not close it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there we go now we have the user id we have everything we have the database now we're going to add the information to where to the database so to add information to the database just simply say db dot what dot collection because they want to specify the collection that you want to add it to so users collection dot what dot document dot dot document aha uh -huh. now here since i have the id here i have the id so i'm going to specify this id in this okay here, when you need a new ID, you don't pass anything. But if you want specific document, you just pass this ID here. Remember, I already have ID. Mm -hmm. So I just say docu document, and then I specify the ID here in, in the window. And then I'm going to say dot what? Dot set. So when you say dot set, it will do what? It will get the document in this ID and put the new data that you're going to pass. So if it is not there, it will put it there. If it is there, it will do what? It will update it. Mm -hmm. So dot set, and I'm going to pass this new user object. Can you see? Yes. New user object that I've done that. Uh -huh. So if you want to listen now, sometimes if you do like this, okay, if you do like this, it will do the whole logic and will not know whether it finishes successful or not, but it will do it, okay? 
but most of the time we need to know whether things went well or there's something that went wrong okay so have to listen okay so first of all let me show my dialogue when i start this process i'm going to do what to show the dialogue okay dot set no, dot show right yeah. the progress dialogue so here to start showing the progress so i'll go ahead and uh, listen okay to know that this process going on or what happened so i'll just add dot set i mean dot add on success you see add on success listener then you put new let me let me break this line it's already too long so add on success listener mm -hmm. then just put new on with capital letter and small n mm -hmm. success listener just predictable and then you press enter and then it will do for you the remaining thing that's the good thing about firebase okay so here if it is success i want to create a what a toast that added successfully toast so toast okay mm -hmm. and then say uh successful success okay let me just put success okay uh -huh. success okay so here okay i'll make it success mm -hmm. then after make of it is success then you have to take care of your what of your progress dialogue and close it so dot what dot dismiss or dot hide dot hide okay mm -hmm. so it is really hidden ah, and then it may return from here I hope that is straightforward. Mm -hmm. Then, if it fails, still you have uh, you can add on the same that you want to add to what the click li the failure listener dot add on failure. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be new on on fail. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it fails. I want to make a toast here again and say fail. Fail still I want to close the what? The dialogue. Uh -huh. And then let me put the reason why it is fail in the console. So I just press console, I mean log D. And then I'll create here the tag. So I'll create a tag, we'll just say log T like this, okay? Everything will be done for you. So I'm going to come here in the console and I put uh, failed failed because and then if I want the reason I can find it in this e, mm -hmm. e so e dot get message okay then I'll get the reason why it failed mm -hmm. okay so if I want to always you know it will always complete eh? mm -hmm. it will always reach a point and complete so if I want to always reach a point and complete or I mean when the complete so I can add here add on on but this is option eh? on complete listener new on complete for example we want to make sure in case it does not fail and it does not what so this on complete will always be called whether it fail or not so if you want to always hide your watch your progress dialogue if it has finished we can add it here so even if you, i remove it here and here you will just know that the on complete will always close it no matter what but you can as well close it from here and here and you ignore this okay so that's how we do it okay uh -huh. so after doing that we have now to go lastly to add the, our database i mean to initialize our database on what on in the console so you go to firebase console just go to console of firebase select your application and then you go on uh, firestore and then after reaching faster click on create database okay so say test mode if you want to test uh, production mode i'll show you how to do it but for now just put in test and then say click next and say enable then do enable your what your fire store Aha, uh -huh. so, <laughs> yeah, okay, so here we are. Uh, we, have, we have initialized our, what? our database. So after you enable Firestore, then you should be able to see this, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you have to come here to rules, okay? Come to rules. 
and the you have mm, just set set here yeah they are setting the limited lim limited date for testing <laughs> just put if true remove that eh? remove this condition okay just r remove this and put the word true they write it properly though T T T T T remove this and put true. Why is it crying? Like this. Yeah, like this, okay? Mm -hmm. You should be able to write in all documents as long as is true so no matter what so you just leave it here and then you publish these rules okay so they will be able to do it to write you know data so let's go ahead and uh, create our first what our first application i've not tested it <laughs> for the first time run let me run it and see if everything will be okay so i simply come here and select the emulator and then go ahead and run our application and we see if we can insert our first data successfully. So it will create the, uh, the users. Collection by name of the user collection. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so here is our application. So let's go ahead and add there. Yeah, I'll begin by myself. Wahinda <laughs> Mubarak. Address Kampala. Uganda. Okay, so I'll click on register. Mm. Progress bar. And uh here -huh, we wait. Success. Mm -hmm. So let us go to our database. You see, you go to console. So if it's a new collection, first time to not show you directly. So if I click there, you have to open it again, just refresh it again. You see, mm -hmm. users has come and uh, our id and my name is perfect. there like that perfect uh -huh. so let us go ahead and add another person uh -huh. so i can as well see it directly when uh, if i'm connected i can as well see it directly as i add there okay so i'll go ahead and add this i did not clear the form Abdul Aziz. Let me share like that. So the place is Kabul. Mm -hmm. Kabul. Afghan. Like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Afghani. There's I. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Okay, so you see, if I add, just look at uh, background here. Mm -hmm. Just look at the, uh, it will help you to show you live preview. So if mm -hmm. I click on register, so, and you see, you see, there's something that is added here. Mm -hmm. And if I click on it, automatically, to show me. So you can do some right. So that's how we add. So without wasting much time, uh, try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. And you should be able to reach that point. So it means that if you add something there, then you can display it in any part of the world. Someone can be able to access your part, your application, and your data. So let us go ahead and do what? And the, let us go ahead and do what? And add the, and, and, and look at the edit and delete. Okay? Oh, okay, reading, reading. We want to see how we can read and present this data here. Okay? So let us see how we can read. So to read, I'm going to use the same activity. I'm going to put this uh, data here. I'm just going to put it uh, data here. I'm going to put this data here, okay? okay. So first of all, let us see. After adding, I want to be deleting. Yeah, eh? to yeah I, I want to... to 
Okay, uh, well, after adding on to, rest to be restarting this, uh, this activity, just for the simplicity, okay? Mm -hmm. So, after, uh, after successful add, or here on complete, I should restart the activity. Okay. So, how do I restart the activity? By just starting it again. So, by calling it say, so intent on complete, no matter what, intent is going to be I is equal to new intent, intent and I'll put main activity dot this and then again I'll pass the same dot what no. dot class and then I'll say start context dot start activity I'll pass I and uh, I'll finish I'll return so that it should not return again again and again so when you start this one if someone clicks on back it should quit the app yeah so that's it now let us see how we can read from database so i'm going to come here in the on create here on the create after binding view i'm going to call uh, get data okay mm -hmm. get uh, online data so like this i'll create this uh activity i mean this method okay so we already have the database instance so we're going to get the data so to get the data is just simple just write db dot what dot gate i mean dot, dot collection so here meaning the table so it is what's called users collection I have so you want to know a list of documents not a single document a list of documents mm -hmm. so i'll simply get uh, this document by saying the by saying dot get all i want all okay so i don't specify a specific document mm -hmm. so just simply add dot get okay mm -hmm. so after you add the listener dot add on success listener new on success listener eh? new on success listener like this okay so it will send you back the snapshot of your data here this one but remember it doesn't know which data that you request for so you're going to change this data and convert it to this one so before I change the data, so I can have a, a, a list of what of users, okay? Mm -hmm. First, so I can just say simply, I can simply say list of what mm -hmm. of user model. I can call it what yes. users. Users is equal to new uh, array list. Just to initialize it to make it empty, okay? So now I'm going to change this one to yes. users. So change it to users, just simply say users is equal to, first of all, let me first check if it is not null, okay? Mm -hmm. If, if it is null, I should just return, okay? Return, okay? So if, you can say if is not empty, okay, dot is empty, you see, it even give you a method. If, okay, if it is empty, I can as well also. Oh. It's not empty. <laughs> it's not okay, if it's empty, still I'll also return. Uh -huh. So if it passes these two levels, I'll go ahead and convert this to what? To users objects. Mm -hmm. So to convert to ob users object, you just get this query snapshot dot to objects. Then you pass the model that you expect. You have, of course, you expect what? Mm -hmm user model dot what dot class like this okay mm -hmm. so by doing like this it will convert for you these things to what to users let me call it users users list mm -hmm. because you expect a list so here you'll have got this table with your what with your records uh -huh. so i'm going to feed these users uh -huh. So let me put here toast. I can put a progress bar here and I show that I'm progressing, something like this. But to save time, I'll just put 
Uh, here is simple tools that say loading users, okay? Mm -hmm. Like this. But if you want, you can put the progress bar. Uh, so I can put here success load, okay? I can say toast. And then I can even go ahead and show the number of these users. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here on fail, I can still add also dot add on failure, okay? Maybe because of poor network, maybe what? On fail, and then I can say toast. Failed to load. Okay? So, like this. Now here, I want to feed this data in a what? In a text view. I don't want to put a recycler view, whatever, to make it long, but simple, I'm going to put it in what? In a text view. So let me create a what? A string. I can call it user data, okay? Mm -hmm. So, this string, you can utilize it to nothing by default. So what I'm going to do, I'm going just to loop these users as I'm putting them in a what? In a string. This is just for demonstration. I don't put again recycle IV and the rest. So it should be for yeah. user model U. Okay? And then you put here users. I hope you know how to do that loop. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is how we loop in Java. Just say what you want to type class to, give it a name, and then put the data that you're looping. So I'm going to loop as a um, user uh, data. I'm going to loop as I'm concatenating, okay? You mm -hmm. see, plus equal to the name, okay? Name, right? Mm -hmm. Name, and then I can add also comma, uh, say from, uh, put here, from, if I can say of, and then I put the what the what the country, or the address, user. I don't know. It's going to be you. That what that address, and then I can put what a new line, like this. I think you can understand me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after I'll go ahead and put here a text view maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. I have to get here a text view. You cannot be put it in there is a I want I'm going to get a list of users. Oh. Yeah, so I'm going to put here March parent March parent the remaining one. Okay. Uh -huh, then I'll have to give what? Uh, uh, yeah, an ID so I can give it some uh, margin of, of 15 dp by 10. And then I can give it ID users data like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, since there may be many, so I may need to put a what? A scroll view, okay? Mm -hmm. So that you should be able to scroll. So I'm going to come here to the main activity and bind this edit text, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean text, edit text view. Mm -hmm. And bind, and bind. Okay, so after doing that, I uh, will go ahead and uh, now set this data, okay? Mm -hmm. Very good. So after looping, I will now have to set the data here, okay? So users data dot set text to be user data. <laughs> it almost looked the same. Users data, this is users data. It almost looked the same, but 
you can differentiate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this data will be fed in this text view. So let's go ahead and increase the size here. Okay, let's run the application. Okay, so you see, automatically it has added our users. So let's add another user. Uh, maybe Hadija to Jaze from Banjul, Gambia. Okay, click on add. So when to begin, to will start this with activity and then you can see success and then you can add it yeah so i think it is understandable right mm -hmm. okay so i don't i don't need with i don't think that you need even too much explanation but um, i hope you've understood so now we're going to go ahead and look at uh, delete delete and then edit okay so to delete, you're going to implement the pop and push. Okay. So we're going to put here pop, then push. The edit, it can be a home task. Because I don't want to spoon feed you. So we're going to put the deleting. So to delete, I'm going to put here just a linear layout. A simple linear, linear layout. I'm going to call it match parent height wrap content. Ah. And then here we're going to put two buttons. I can get this. Okay, yeah, orientation is important because you're going to have more than one thing. Orientation. <coughs> mm, horizontal, yeah. And then I'm going to put here two buttons, okay? Mm, so I can give it weight, eh? Weight of one and weight of one. Very good. Perfect. So I can go ahead and give this one. Uh, can go ahead. Can we remove them? Okay. I can go ahead and give it uh, the ID of edit btn edit. can change the color here yeah. background color and red black and text text will be edit right mm -hmm. no I don't I say edit will be your home task it's going to be just pop Remove the last. Mm -hmm. uh, pop. <laughs> the <laughs> I want to remove the last or the f the first or the light the last. Uh, removing the last, it does not have a name. <laughs> okay, it is just uh, uh, pop. last okay this is pop fast pop last pushes to add so this is just for deleting the first or the last okay so give this one the last okay let's give it maybe Color. Okay, 
So let us implement this logic. So we want to put here a button. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add uh, this button here. For the second time, for the sake of time, it has implement only one. A pop. Let's just show the same thing. Deleting, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's it. So go to bind. Mm -hmm. So say the click listener. I mean, first find it. Okay, then we'll go ahead and say the what? The click listener. Okay, so here we will first check if the users is not empty. So I have first check if users is equal to what? It's got null. I'll go ahead and return. You can say users. Okay, I'll just go ahead and return. Okay, I can put a toast. Okay, so I'll go and check if it is empty. Okay, if the users are empty, these are the scenarios that you have to check, not just go ahead and execute before you check. If it's empty, uh, user list is empty, right? Mm -hmm. Good, so, and I return. So if it passes this one, then I'll get the last and then delete it, okay? So how do I do that? I'll just simply say uh, db, okay, mm -hmm. dot collection, I specify the collection, user, collection, dot what, dot document, and then I specify inside here the document that I'm referencing to, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be users dot get. I can remove the one in the first. You can remove the one in position zero or the one in position last. Which one should you remove? <laughs> no, it <laughs> pop is removing from the last. Last, it's just a FIFO. Can you do the FIFO or the 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 the, the leaf the the li, le, the lifo. last in last out first in first out as you wish so you can remove from zero or if you want to remove from position one it's going to be users users what dot size minus one right mm -hmm. because it's going to be what an array so it's last in last out uh-huh so here yeah, i've just got the user now i want to uniquely now identify this user so by putting what user id like this okay mm -hmm. so here it will get for me the user id of the last person that was added in the list can you see users dot get the last user which is users dot size minus one and then dot id and then dot what dot uh, delete mm -hmm. like this okay mm -hmm. so you can as well stop it from here or you can as well add the progress and the success listeners so me i'll assume that has been the okay i'll let me add uh, the listeners dot add let me break it you can break it from here aha uh -huh. dot add or oh, success listener it's going to be new new on success list 
access listener just like that uh, so let us come and do this logic that we did here of starting the activity like this okay so I'll just instead of hiding dialog this time let me okay let's say again show our, our dialog here again so when it starts deleting we'll do what we will show here the deleting our progress dialog dot say dot dot set title right mm -hmm. and say deleting mm -hmm. so here we hide the dialog let's put a toast And like I say, success what? Success delete. And then we start again this activity and we finish. So I'll do the same for failure. Ah, in rare cases it fails. It's done by Google one. They know what they are doing. So in very rare cases, even though the network is offline most of the time, but to make things efficient. You better add listen also to on failure and do something when you when it fails. Okay, so let us see. I hope uh, there's no confusion so far. Mm -hmm. Let us see. So there it comes. So it is loading and there is our list. So we pop success delete. It is deleting and it is loading the list. You see, pop success delete and delete the list. We pop. So if you pop before it finishes loading, yeah, it's all done. So if you pop again, it is show. List is empty. Let us see what it will say. List is empty, not null. Yeah, so let us add Kal Harir from okay, Kal Harir. Oh. Capital city of Somalia is what? Uh, no, no, no. It's called um, Mojibut. Ah, no, 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 no. Mogadishu. <laughs> Mogadishu. Mogadishu, Somalia. So now our list yeah. should be empty. So when you add, should show automatically it comes, and then this one should be there. So we pop, and it should be deleted from here. It's deleted, and the list is also empty. Okay, so that's basically how we implement. Firebase fast or uh, in our project. So in the next class, we will implement the real world application. I think we should make a food application, whereby we will implement room database. We the course, man. We'll implement. We the course. We are recording. We are recording. Yeah. So in the next class, we'll implement room database, glide uh, view. If time will allow, we'll also implement the the what the slider library. And also, uh, Firebase. The users will be able to create their account, the customers, and then uh, you'll be able to have the administrators. They'll be able to log into the application, add there the food menu and description, and with their photos, the users will come and browse through these food menus, and they can make the orders for these foods, and then the administrators can also receive uh, the orders using different phones or different pl platforms. So that's what we'll do in the next class. It will be a full project for food uh, delivery application. Uh, don't miss.